All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless you all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope that y'all doing all right and staying strong and solid in these times that run. I pray that you have repented and that you are baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just hope that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord is with you, that he guides you, he protects you, he looks out for you, he comforts you. I pray that your mental health gets better. I pray that you become more strong and wise in the Lord. I just pray that you stop backsliding and you turn from your ways and you stay on a narrow path for the Lord. And that you read the Bible, you stay in the word, you be a doer of the word as well. And I pray that you keep your eyes fixed on the prize. You fight the good fight of faith. And I just pray that you can help a whole bunch of people along the way on your journey as well with whatever resource that God blesses you with. And I pray that whatever you touch your hands, whatever your hands touch will prosper. And I just hope that, you know, the Lord use you for his glory and that he can just use you, man, to help out so much people as much as you can. Because we got to stop thinking solely about ourselves, people. We have to truly, truly always think about the Lord and think about others as well. Amen. So let us take it one day at a time, y'all. Let us keep doing Father's business and Father's will forever. All right, forever, y'all. Yes, yes, let us thank the Lord for another day. Let us thank the Lord for giving us clothes on our back, food in our belly, a roof over our head. Let us thank the Lord for protecting us coming in and coming out. And let us just thank him for giving us breath, man. You know, people don't appreciate things no more. People complain too much. People are ungrateful. But we are always grateful for everything that the Lord has brought us through and continues to bring us through. Amen. The Lord changed not. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the Lord always looking out for us people. As long as we keep doing his will and keep him first and stay centered around him and always, you know, dedicate everything to him. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Thank you all for the support. I appreciate the listeners out there, the people in the comment section, the followers, subscribers. I appreciate all of you heavy, man. Shout out to Unplug Him for the shout out. I truly appreciate that, man. He sent some love my way, so I truly appreciate all the new subscribers and what have you. Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome, body of Christ. Greetings, everybody. Shalom, family. What is going on with you all, man? I hope that you all hanging in there and being patient and firm and steadfast and faithful and in alignment with the Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome all peoples, all nations, all tribes, all languages, all tongues, all four corners of the earth, all races, all faces. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, y'all. All faces, all races. Whether you are chosen or adopted, it is all right. Whether you are a Israelite or a Gentile, it is all right. It's all right. Let us come together. Let us gather. Let us fellowship. Let us praise the Lord together. Amen. All four corners of the earth, all of you people, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let us love the Lord our God for all of our mind, heart, and soul. Let us love our neighbors as we love ourselves. All right, let us obey the gospel. Let us know the Lord better. Let us obey the law, stage commandments. Let us just obey his word and let us just keep sharing it with people. Let us be doers of the word as well. All right, let us be doers as well. Let us be examples um, of the most high, amen. And let us always help people get Christ. I pray for people, encourage one another, uplift one another, reach out to one another. Iron sharpens iron, edification, correction, tough love, all of that. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, y'all. So in today's message, we are going to continue the Bible reading series. All right. We're just now getting to the book of Luke. Um, yesterday, I kept the light and just read the introduction, the commentary, and just the first chapter of Luke. All right. And I was just going in about God preordaining salvation for his people the birth of John the Baptist and Jesus, and just going through that, all right? So we're going to pick up and continue on the book of Luke chapter 2 onward, all right? After after the Bible reading, we will close out with the prayer. We will close out with the priestly blessing. And we will close out with giving all the praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And praise His only begotten Son who died for our sins. Amen? Hallelujah. Yes, yes, y'all. All right, y'all. So let us get into the book of Luke chapter 2. All right, the book of Luke, chapter 2. Here we go. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius, Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and 
and cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn, the shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on the earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into the heaven, gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that had happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Jesus presented in the temple on the eighth day when it was time to circumcise him. He was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went to the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the, fit, the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. The boy Jesus at the temple. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast, according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on, a four, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in a temple court sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. All right. So that's the book of Luke chapter two reading. 
very good reading. It describes more of the birth and buildup of Jesus and the angels and the shepherds and all the prophesizing and events playing out and everybody being glad to see him, to, to see the anointed one, and also to see how his parents was dealing with him and treating him as he was in his adolescence, as he was young. And it's very interesting as you read the book of Luke chapter 2, because um, it goes more into the customs that they did when they consecrated the firstborn babies and circumcising them, anointing them, things of that nature, as he's presented in the temple, um, keeping the law of the Lord and what have you. Also, Simeon was a blessed man who was around the situation as well. And he was also moved by the spirit, as we can see. And it's interesting as you read Matthew, as you read Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 32, it says, A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. So it's interesting that that's noted and also discusses the prophetess Anna, the daughter of Phanuel. And it's cool how they introduced her as well with Simeon, because when they talked about her, it said that in Luke chapter two, verse 37, it said that and then she was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at the very moment, she gave thanks to God, spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. So this is very interesting. I love how it said, how it described how she never left the temple, but she worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Now, that's devotion right there. That's something that we need to take and apply to our own personal lives um, to never stray away from the presence of God, the temple, the congregation, assembly, church, fellowship, what have you. All right. You have people today who always complain and have all types of opinions and certain ways about how they feel about church and fellowship or what have you. But this prophetess Anna, she never left the temple. She was always in there worshiping and fasting and praying. So that shows you how devoted she was. And we need to be more devoted to God with our actions and not just with our lips. Um, our lifestyle has to reflect his love, his power, his presence, um, his spirit, worshiping the truth and spirit and sincerity, you know, with a pure heart to fast and pray night and day. It takes a pure heart to do that, to be in the temple and never leave it. That's a pure heart, really committed. We need that type of commitment when it comes to following the Lord and worshiping him. Amen. So that's something we can apply to our life. And also, as you read the book of Luke, chapter two, it goes further into how uh, his parents went over <laughs> went to Jerusalem for the uh, for the pe for the feast of the Passover. And then Jesus was left behind. He said well, he was just in the temple um, asking questions and learning, you know. He was in the temple courts, listening to the teachers and everything and asking questions. So that's kind of cool and funny. Uh, parents go on a trip, they can, their babies with them, and then they couldn't find it. They go all the way back for them. That's kind of funny. And and Jesus said, uh, why are you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? So Jesus also showed a commitment, of course, to the father and showed his commitment to being in the temple, being in the courts, being in the house of God, being in fellowship, being in congregation, assembly, all those different things. It's very important to spend time in the spend time in the Lord's house, Amen. Always, 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 Amen. So, yep, yep. That reads the book of Luke chapter two. All right. What I would like to do before I get into Luke chapter three, I would like to read the commentary that's in between these pages before we get to Luke chapter three. Okay. So let us go into the commentary. Today's Bible reading, the book of Luke chapter two. Verses 1 through 20. Recommended reading. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 42 through 45. The book of John, chapter 13, verses 3 through 17. The book of Philippines, Philippians, the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. The title of this commentary is called A Humble God. All right, so... Um, with these commentaries, these are just different experiences from different people, different voices from worldly carnal senses. So let's not get so hung up on it. OK, so the title of this commentary is called A Humble God. Every year since it first happened, f since it first appeared in 1965, the animated TV special A Charlie Brown Christmas retells the story of Charlie Brown's search for the meaning of Christmas. The program shows him directing the Christmas pageant with his friends, none of whom can concentrate on the true meaning of Christmas. Even his faithful dog, Snoopy, is swept up in a materialistic fervor when he wins a contest by 
decorating a uh, decorating his doghouse in lights and tinsel. Finally, Charlie Brown desperately yells, desperately yells, can't anyone tell me what Christmas is all about? And his friend Linus, Linus, answers by reciting the story of Jesus' birth. Ultimately, this, hum- this humble and lowly birth shook the world. You'd have expected the birth of the long-awaited Messiah to have been surrounded by great wealth, ceremony, and important people. Yet Jesus' adopted father worked as a simple carpenter, and his young mother wielded virtually no affluence. They placed a newborn king in a manger, a feeding, a feeding, a feeding trough, trough for animals. They probably slept in the cave where the inn owners kept their animals. Sure, the animals announced Jesus' birth and sang of his glory, but not to an audience of great men and women. Instead, only simple shepherds tending their flocks out in the field heard the angels' fanfare. Makes you wonder just what kind of God we worship. He possesses great power and wisdom, but he will he willingly humbled himself for our salvation. Jesus eventually died a criminal's death on the cross. He lived with us, suffered with us, and died for us. Just as Jesus first came to ordinary people, God appears to ordinary people today. You might feel more like a shepherd, farmer, or innkeeper than a king or a prophet. Take heart, Jesus will come to anyone who will receive him. Know that when ordinary people decide to follow him, he can accomplish extraordinary things through them. Amen. Mm -hmm. Things to take away from this commentary. How would you describe the real meaning of Christmas? Why do you think Jesus' birth took place under such humble circumstances? What steps can you take to become a more humble person? In other words, the best of men that wore ear wore earth about him as a, was a sufferer. A soft, meek, patient, humble, tranquil spirit, the first true gentleman that ever breathed. Thomas Decker. The first gentleman, huh? They call him the gentleman. So that's the commentary. And I know that was a bit little pagan about the whole Christmas thing or what have you. But um, the theme of this commentary was just to acknowledge how humble Christ was, how his journey was, how he entered Jerusalem, how he came into the earth. Everything about him from beginning to end was humble. Nothing was vain or arrogant or haughty or braggadocious or um, over the top. Everything was deep, subtle, humble, but meaningful and powerful. Amen. So that's the commentary in between the pages. Now we will go into the book of Luke chapter 3. All right. The book of Luke chapter 3. Here we go. John the Baptist prepares the way. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius, Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, to track to charge of Galilee, his brother Philip, to charge Tetrarch of Euteria, Ateria, and Trasonatus, Trasonatus. My bad, y'all. These Roman words are kind of throwing me off a bit. And my bad. Trasonitis and Lysanias, 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 to charge of Abilene. During the high priesthood of, of, of Ananias and, and Enos and Sophias, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. He went into all the country around Jordan, preaching baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as is written in the book of the words of, the, of Isaiah the prophet. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord and make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and high and hill made low, the crooked roads shall become straight and the rough way smooth, and all mankind will see God's salvation. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, The man with two tunics should share with him who has none, and the one who has food should do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized. 
Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly, expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork, his winnowing fan is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John extorted, exhorted the people and preached the good news to them. But when John rebuked Herod, the Tetrarch, because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and all the other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked John up in prison. The Baptism and Genealogy of Jesus When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, so it was thought of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, Melchi, the son of Janai, the son of Joseph, the son of Matthias, Matthias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Elsli, the son of Nagai, Nagai, the son of Maath, the son of Matthias, Matthias, the son of Simeon, the son of Josech, the son of Jadah, the son of Jonan, the son of Ressa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shetiel, Shetiel, the son of Neri, Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adi. Adai, the son of Kassam, the son of Elmadam, the son of Ur, the son of Joshua, the son of Eliezer, the son of Jerem, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Janam, the son of Eliakim, Eliakim, the son of Melia, the son of Mena, the son of Mattatha, Matatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashon, the son of Aminadab, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahur, the son of Sarug, the son of Reu, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphasad, Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalel, Mahalalel, the son of Kenan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Okay, so that is the book of Luke chapter 3 reading, okay? As we review the book of Luke chapter 3 reading, it starts off with John the Baptist making a way for for Jesus as prophesied by Isaiah, saying make a straight way for the Lord and what he's going to do. And John the Baptist is going on with his ministry, with his disciples, because John had his disciples as well. Um, John was about that Elijah ministry. And he, uh, he came in an Elijah-like form and he was taking the role of Elijah and what he was passing on towards him. And John was um, really with the strong doctrines, the repentance and the baptism and things of that nature. And with John, he got thrown in prison over going against King Herod and um, his family doing wickedness and incest and things like that. And John rebuked it. So he got thrown in prison over that. So that was a clear example of when you stand on the word of God and you're about sound doctrine and pure gospel and righteousness, um, you will get imprisoned, mocked, persecuted, beat up, even killed for it. All right. So John uh, really went through all these things and he's prophesizing more about Jesus and saying how he would baptize with the Holy Spirit and the fire. 
and John is saying how he is not worthy to even tie his sandals and things of that nature. And also, John is talking to soldiers and tax collectors and uh, telling them what to do and instructing them because they were curious and wanted to ask questions and wanted to know about the things of God or what have you. Also, in the book of Luke chapter 3, it goes further into baptism and it goes further into the bloodline of Jesus. All right. And with his bloodline, it goes from generation to generation and is similar to Matthew chapter 1. With his with the introduction of his bloodline and showing you that family tree, all right. So, all that just shows how Jesus, his tribe is Judah. His race is Shem, all right. He's a son of Abraham, promise. He's a son of Adam, humanity. All right, comes from that lineage. All right, that family tree is important. All right, history, DNA, tribe lineages are important. People never lose sight of that. All right. So, yes, yes, that wraps up the book of Luke chapter 3. Now, what I would like to do as we continue is go on the book of Luke chapter 4. All right. The book of Luke chapter 4. Here we go. The temptation of Jesus. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Tempted by the devil, he ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but by the words of God. By the word of God. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him an an instant, showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down here, for it is written, he will command his his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left them until an opportune time. Mm. Jesus rejected at Nazareth. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue as was his custom. And he stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it was written, where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, today, The scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked. Jesus said to them, surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Capernaum. I tell you the truth, he continued. No prophet is accepted in his own hometown. In his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him down the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus drives out an evil spirit. Then he went down to Capernaum, Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath began began to teach the people. They were amazed at his teaching because his message had authority. In the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon, by a demon, an evil spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Ha! 
What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Excuse me. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. Then a demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What is this teaching with authority and power? He gives orders to evil spirits and they come out. And the news about him spread throughout the surrounding area. Jesus heals many. Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. When the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because this is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. All right. So that is the book of Luke chapter four reading. All right. It's the book of Luke chapter four reading. I would like to read this in commentary scripture. God cares for the oppressed. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed. All right. It's beautiful. God does care of people. He cares. All right. So as we review the book of Luke chapter 4 reading, it talks about Jesus going fast and praying, how he was led by the spirit. And the devil tempted him and Jesus, you know, passed the test, the trials and tribulations. He passed it and he stood firm in the word. He resisted the devil and he clinged on to God. Amen. We've got to resist that temptation, people. All right. And then as Jesus went on, Jesus went to Nazareth. He returned to Galilee and he was teaching and preaching and things of that nature. He was also in the temple as well in the synagogues by the hillside and he he recited he requoted the uh what isaiah prophesied in the scroll all right so back then they had scrolls you know what i mean and he unfold he unrolled it and read it and then you know he wrote he read after he read it he gave it back to them to the attendant and then also as jesus was dealing with this host, host, host there was hostile towards him and they were kind of mocking him and saying, heal yourself and this, that, and the other. And Jesus was just quoting how no prophet is accepted in this hometown. And he had brought up the examples of Elijah and brought up the examples of uh, Elisha. All right. And with Elijah, he only was in that area to help out that widow. You know, the story of Elijah with the miracle in the empty jar. And he brought that up, basically. He also brought up Elisha with the uh, the story of him only helping out that leper in the uh, in the area. So Jesus was just saying how um, a man of the most high, a true prophet, is not accepted in his hometown, all right? And that's just a hard thing that many people have to deal with. You know, you try to go back to your hometown, there's no love there, all right? When you are walking in the power of God, when you're obeying him, and people see the anointing, they see the blessing, they just see it. The envy, the jealousy, the hate, the maliciousness, the treacherous energy spirits, um, covetousness, you know, all that negative spirits, it all just, the hostile stuff, it just, that's what they, that's what they got to deal with. Uh, being a prophet is not easy. You know, people call themselves all these types of titles and um, they don't even understand how heavy those responsibilities are. Because everybody today calls themselves a prophet, a prophetess, a, a pastor, evangelist, this and that, and they don't even like, these these were God sent people, okay? Like Elijah, Elisha, uh, Jesus. These were God sent people. These were not made men and chosen by men. These were chosen by God. When you are chosen by God and you're really walking in it, um, that hate and hostility comes along with it. To whom much is given, much is required. So when you're a true prophet, you deal with that hatred within your own hometown. And when Jesus said that example of himself, Elijah and Elisha, uh, the people were mad and angry and. They were plotting to hurt him and throw him down the hill, kill him and do all types of stuff. But Jesus got up out of there. 
So that's the thing. If you are a true prophet and you're walking in the power, you're being led by the spirit and you're doing the works and what have you, uh, people will try to hurt you and harm you, harass you, do all types of things. That's what comes along with it. You know what I'm saying? But you have to be wise as a serpent and you got to get up out of there. You got to learn how to dodge, duck and dodge them too. All right. It's not about being a uh, weak or a coward. It's about being smart and wise and preserving your life. You know, um, when God has his has hands on you, he's going to give you an outlet or route to go when things get a little hectic. Amen. So um, on your behalf, on your part, you got to be able to learn, read the room. You know, you got to read the room. You got to have that awareness and know when it's time to bounce. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because this walk with God, the word and the power, it's moving by the spirit, uh, it will offend and trigger all types of people. So you just have to always be on your toes about that. Amen. So it just goes more further into that. And then Jesus is also healing more people throughout the book of Luke chapter four. Drived out the evil spirit, helped out Simon's mother-in-law who had a high fever. Jesus rebuked that spirit and it left. Amen. The power of God is always moving and working. And it just went from there, okay? So he kept on with preaching the good news of the kingdom and helping other people. And as Jesus was going about his journey, uh, people of the town wanted him to stay. But Jesus was like, hey, I got to go. I got other place to go. You know what I mean? So God just never wants you to just stay in one place your whole life. But people are so infatuated and obsessed that they want him to stay forever. But um, like when you're moving by the spirit, the spirit leads you to different cities, different counties, different states, different regions. When you're really on that path, that journey, the spirit just moves you. So Jesus had to always go to different towns because it's unfair to just stay at one place and do it. There's many people all over the world who needs that healing, that deliverance, the gospel, the word, the power of God, repentance, the baptism. They need it. That's the thing. So God, in these last days, God is going to move us. He's going to move us just like all four corners of the earth. He's going to move us. Depending on your situation, your finances or how you, your living conditions, he might just use it within that area, but don't get too attached to it because he's going to move you somewhere. He's going to move you just to a different place for his will. All right. So always be ready to get up and bounce. Always be ready to get up and go. Be obedient to the Lord. Move by the spirit. If the Lord tells you go to this city, go to that city. If he tells you go to that county, go to that county. If he tells you to go to the state, go to that state. If he tells you to go to this country, go to that country. Amen. Always obey God's voice. Always be led by the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. It's the helper. All right. It will lead you to God's will and his presence and his glory. So you have to keep seeking God's face. Keep listening to the spirit. Let it move you people. Okay. We have to stop moving by the flesh and emotions and self-will and mood swings. You got to move by the spirit people. Spirit led, not self will, spirit father's will, okay? Always remember that. Always, okay? All right. So that's the book of Luke chapter 4 reading. Now let us get to the book of Luke chapter 5 reading, all right? The book of Luke chapter 5. Here we go. Yes, yes, Luke chapter 5. The calling of the first disciples. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little sore, a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they, can, they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me. Lord, I am a sinful man. For he, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James John, and John, the sons of Zebedee, Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. The man with leprosy. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy, when he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. 
Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and the offer and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus heals a paralyzed person. One day as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or is to say, or to say, get up and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. The Calling of Levi After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi, sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him, and Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus questioned about fasting. They said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours go on eating and drinking. Jesus answered, Can you make the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. In those days they will fast. He told them this parable. No one tears a patch from a new garment and sews it on an old one. If he does, he will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No new wine must be poured into no New wine must be poured into new wineskins, and no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for he says the old is better. Hmm. So that's the book of Luke chapter 5 reading. And this goes further as we review it, it goes further in detail about Jesus calls his disciples, the miraculous catch of fish, and how much fish they had, they had caught that night that... Um, their nets started to break and they had to get extra help and support. <laughs> so that's just an example of how much amount of people will be able to be fishers, will be fishers of men. So we're going to be able to catch so much people that it probably won't even hold up and be able to bear. So we need each other's help and support there in this ministry and do these things. Amen. And that miraculous catch of fish was amazing. I love that story. As we go into Luke chapter 5, furthermore, it goes more into detail also about Jesus healing the man with leprosy and helping him out and touching and cleansing him. And also the news kept spreading more and more about Jesus and the crowd came to him in large crowds and large amount of people came to get healed of their sicknesses. And at times Jesus would often withdraw and go to a lonely place and pray. You know, it just shows you how much it was and how much it overwhelmed him. So he had to kind of back away and have some me time, some lonely time. So in life, whenever you feel overwhelmed or suffocated or stressed out or what have you, you have to always break away and withdraw, have that me time and pray to God and, you know, just have that, that, that quiet, that quiet rest, that peace, that still, that stability. That's what you need in your life. You need that balance of stability 
and quietness and peace because the ministry, the walk of God, the work can be a lot. We deal with all types of people, all that could be draining and stressed out. So you always got to withdraw so you don't get burnt out. Amen. And Jesus, Jesus also here healing the paralytic as well in front of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And they always was giving him some trouble about that. And then also Jesus calling Levi the tax collector. And Levi, you know, threw a banquet for Jesus and everything. And also Jesus went and made the parables about the wineskins and things of that nature. And this one, he was just describing how the old is better. So he was kind of saying it in that sense of the tradition of how to go about things and the difference between something old and something new, all in all. So that's the book of Luke, chapter 5, reading. All right. All right, the book of Luke, chapter 6. Here we go. Lord of the Sabbath. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to pick some heads of grain, rub them in their hands, and eat the kernels. Some of the Pharisees asked, why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and take, and taking the consecrated bread he ate, what is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is the Lord, is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he went into the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with the shriveled hand, Get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save a life or to destroy, or to destroy it? He looked around at, all, at them all and then said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. But they were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. Oh, excuse me. The twelve apostles, twelve disciples. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When coming, when morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them, whom he has whom he also designated apostles, designated apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, the Zealot Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a, a betrayer, a traitor. Blessings and woes. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your, your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. Mm. Love for enemies. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners, led to, even, even sinners lend to sinners. Expecting to be repaid in full. 
But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Mm. Judging others. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He also told them this parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when, you're, when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? Mm. You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. A tree and its fruit. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. briars. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the out of the heart, out, for out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Mm. The wise and the foolish builders. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on a rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Mm. That is the book of Luke chapter 6 reading. All right. Love rereading the gospel and how to go about things, man. We always have to remind ourselves of these things and make sure we practice these things. It's an everyday practice, people. Everyday practice, man. All right. We have to always practice these things to keep them into mind. So as we review the book of Luke chapter 6, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus is, is reminding himself of how he is the Lord of the Sabbath. And it's important to do good on the Sabbath and to save a life on the Sabbath. He was um, stressing that to his uh, disciples, to his people, in front of those Pharisees, okay? And then this goes also about Jesus appointing the 12 disciples and um, designating them and what have you. And then Jesus also discussing the blessings of those and the curses of those. You know, it goes back to the other book of Matthew and talks about, but that's how you were pouring the spirit for the kingdom is yours. And so on and so on. And then it also discusses about woe to those who are rich, for they have already received their comfort. And woe to those who speak of men who speak well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. Mm. So it goes more further than that. In Luke chapter 6, it goes into detail about loving your enemies and handle things with grace and love and what have you. And also reminding how the Most High. He's even kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. But be merciful just as your father is merciful. We have to practice these things, people. I'll speak for myself, too. All right, We got to practice these things. All right, We have to reflect and ask ourselves, are we truly merciful as our father is merciful? You know? And also, Jesus going into detail about judging others, not being a hypocrite in judgment, and um, checking yourself before you check someone else, basically. You know, evaluating yourself before you are concerned with someone else's ways, right? And then also Jesus, Jesus discussing a good tree and a bad tree and the, the difference of a good fruit and a bad fruit. And then he also, Jesus discusses the importance of building your foundation on a rock when you practice the things that uh, he did. Your foundation is built on the rock. It's built on the Lord. Nothing can shake it. Nothing can move you. Through the good, bad, or ugly, your, your foundation is rock solid because of the Lord. That's your foundation. Amen. So Jesus was stressing those things within the book of Luke chapter 6. Okay. Now, what I would like to do is read the commentary that's between the pages of the book of Luke chapter 6. All right. So here we go. 
Today's Bible reading, Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 36. Recommended reading, the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, verses 8 through 23. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 48. Also the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. The title of this commentary is called Unnatural Love. Late in the winter of 1569, Dirk Wellams found himself running from the Dutch authorities. Although no one today would see his beliefs about baptism as radical or threatening, leaders at the same time regarded them as heretical, heretical and illegal. Fleeing for his life, Wellams came to a pond covered with thin ice. After safely making his way across, he discovered that his per- pursuer, pursuer hadn't been so fortunate. Responding to the officer's cry for help, Willems ran back, pulled him out of the frigid water, and dragged him to shore. The guard then seized Willems and escorted him to prison. Soon afterward, authorities burned Willems at the stake. Willems took seriously the teaching of Jesus to love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Verse 27, his action of saving his pursuer certainly defied what we might call logical reasoning. Chances are you'll never have to make the kind of life-changing decision Dirk Willems faced, but life still presents plenty of opportunities to apply Jesus' challenging words. An aggressive driver might cut you off the next time you're on the freeway. You might walk up to your car in a parking lot to find paint from someone else's car door and plant it in your fender. Your neighbor might let his dog bark straight toward your bedroom window window night after night. Or tensions might come to a head with a co-worker who seems bent on making you look bad. Few of us would call loving our enemies natural. Jesus didn't say we'd enjoy it. But no matter how we feel, we can honor Jesus' command to pray for those who mistreat you. Verse 28. We can pray for the self-centered driver, the anonymous fender whacker, the, incons- the inconsiderate neighbor, the rival co-worker. Often people mean no harm, so we pray mostly for our own attitudes. And if people really are out to get us, we can ask God to change their hearts and draw them to Christ. Mm. Things to take away from this commentary. Who are the enemies in your life right now? How can you pray for your enemies? How can you do good to them? What steps can you take to cultivate a genuine, heartfelt love for others, even your enemies? It's a very great commentary right there. All goes back to heart and the love, y'all. The thing with the gospel always hits the heart, doesn't it? Definitely hits the heart, man. That love and loving the Lord with all your mind, heart, and soul, strength, and might. Loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Loving your enemies. That type of love. Only a few can really practice those things, amen? And we all have to be better in those areas in our lives. I speak for myself as well. Me, you, whoever's listening. We all have to practice these things that Jesus said. All right? Because how can we say that we love a merciful God and we're not even merciful ourselves. How can we say we serve a forgiving God and people walk around with unforgiveness and holding grudges and resentment and bitterness and all those different things? We really got to check ourselves and check our hearts. Amen. So that was the commentary for the book of Luke chapter six. All right. Also, before I go into the book of Luke chapter seven, I just want to read this in commentary scripture within the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 35 God shows kindness to his enemies love your enemies do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back then your reward will be great and you will be sons of the most high because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked all right let us be doers of the word let us apply it to our lives let us practice the things that Jesus told us amen all right so now let us get into the book of Luke chapter 7 The faith of the centurion. When Jesus had finished saying all this in the hearing of the temple, he entered Capernaum, Capernaum, there a centurion servant whom his master valued highly was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to ask him to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, 
Don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. And that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Hallelujah. Jesus raises a widow's son. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, Nain and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. Jesus and John the Baptist. John's disciples told him about all these things, calling two of them. He sent them to the Lord to ask, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blesses the man who does not fall away on the account of me, on account of me. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes. I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. All the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and experts in the law rejected God's purpose for themselves because they had not been baptized by John. To what then can I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to each other, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not cry. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of a tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by all her children. Mm. Jesus anointed by a sinful woman. Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, so he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood before him, as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have, not, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denaries and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he canceled the debts of both. Now which one of them, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt counseled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. 
You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved me, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little loves little. Mm. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Yes, yes, yes. That is the book of Luke chapter seven reading. Very amazing. Awesome read. As we review the book of Luke chapter seven reading, it goes more to detail about the faith of the centurion, how Jesus said that in all of his Israel, he's never seen such great faith like that has been found in Israel. And then Jesus raised the widow's son, the power of God. And then Jesus and John linking up, hanging out with one another, how Jesus came after John and fulfilling prophecy of Isaiah and how they going hand in hand doing the will of God. And also Jesus anointing the sinful woman in the house. And I love when Jesus said that your faith has saved you. Go in peace. That's just some beautiful words right there. Um, Her faith saved her. Just imagine just him telling you that. That's just a beautiful thing, you know. And it wasn't just the faith, it was the action showing the love aspect as well. That faith and love goes hand in hand, y'all. The actions matter, man. The heart, the intentions matter, amen. Details matter. So that sums up the book of seven reading right there. What I would love to do is read the commentary that is attached to the book of Luke chapter seven. All right. All right, here we go. Weekend. The rich, short ruler, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, how you pronounce it, my bad, y'all, bear with me, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, he wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crown, because of the crowd, the book of Luke chapter 19, verse 3, everyone in town knew him, but nobody liked him, he threw the worst parties and was always the first one drunk on his horribly cheap wine, it's not as though he couldn't afford anything better, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus sat atop the whole city, tax collecting heap, and from their years of overpaying collectors, the savvy, the savvy residents of Jericho knew their money could buy better wine. Excuse me. So when rumors started that a well-known teacher from the backwater of Galilee who had a penchant for waxing eloquent about money matters was making his way to Jericho, you can bet the person everyone least expected to see in the welcoming party was Zacchaeus. To everyone's surprise, the little man dressed to the nines showed up anyway. This teacher was, after all, growing extremely popular. And maybe it would do the collection agency's reputation so good to see its chief officer rubbing shoulders with the hero of the working class. But when the day arrived, if Zacchaeus had come to be seen, the irony was only too, was only too apparent when it was he who had trouble seeing the crowds had started at the city gate where Jericho's main drag began its mendering, meandering path through the city. Despite his compromised stature, Zacchaeus had always loved the crowd. Crowds meant influence and power, not to mention a concentration of taxable pack pocketbooks. Hmm. This small town teacher's people skills, the small town teacher's people skills and crowd gathering ability could come in handy for an unpopular political figure. If only Zacchaeus could see how this teacher did it. Zacchaeus knew the parade route well, as he'd been a key figure in many of Jericho's past spectacles. Picking up the final in hem of his garment, the short-legged tax collector hightailed it to a certain bend where the road took a dogleg left to get around a large sycamore tree near the center of town. He hadn't climbed a tree since all his friends were still his height. And if all of Jericho hadn't been down the road heralding the teacher, the crowd would have relished, relished watching Zacchaeus fumble his way up the branches. The only thing sillier than watching Zacchaeus climb up the tree was to see him come barreling out of it when the teacher called him by name. Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. The crowd must have grown knowing that the dismissal, knowing the dismissal reputation of the tax collector's social insensitivity. However, over the huff, Zacchaeus' voice rose up. Here and now, I'm a different person. Whether or not he realized at that moment the crowd was standing there, 
has been a topic of conjecture ever since. Back to the future. Why do you think Zacchaeus wanted so badly to see Jesus? What measures are you willing to take to gain a clearer sight of Jesus? Jesus invites himself into your heart. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door. I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. What can you do to show Jesus that you want him to come in and eat with you? The story continues. Get the whole story of Zacchaeus in the book of Luke chapter 19 verses 1 through 10. All right. So that is the commentary added. We haven't got to Luke 19 yet. We just finished up wrapping Luke 7, but that was just included within the commentary right after it. That's a beautiful commentary because it gives us insight on how eager people were to see Jesus. This short, this short tax collector, this short political man who was very eager to see Jesus. He couldn't see him clearly because he was so short, but yet he made an effort to go out his way to make sure he saw him. So he had to climb a whole entire tree to see him. What efforts are you willing to make to want to see Jesus, to want to be with him? to engage with him, things of that nature. We got to have that hunger, that passion, that thirst for Christ, amen, to see his glory, you know what I mean, to seek God's face, all of those things, amen. So let our lives reflect that hunger for the Lord, amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So that is the reading for today. All right, the book of Luke chapter two, all the way to the book of Luke chapter seven. All right, that is the reading for today. That's the word. All right, so hopefully we can practice these things that Jesus has taught us, follow the examples that he set for us, amen, and let us be a blessing to others and spread that gospel, walk in the power, move by the spirit, things of that nature, hallelujah. Yes, yes, y'all. So what I would love to do as I close out is give all the praise, honor, and glory to the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and praise his only begotten son who died for our sins, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, y'all. So here we go. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, yes. He is the hope for humanity. Yes, he is the second Adam, the Adam, the last Adam, the advocate, the almighty, true and living God, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. The apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atonement sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessed and only potent, the blessed and only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom. The capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the constellation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, wonderful counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desired nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the first born from the dead, first born over all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the I am that I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah, Shalom, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal. He is a king of Israel. Amen. He is a king of kings. Hallelujah. He is a king of kings and Lord of lords. Hosanna, Hosanna. King of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God. The Lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the lie of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord. The Lord is my banner, the Lord is my rock, the Lord is my salvation, the Lord is my strength, the Lord is my shield, the Lord is my fortress, the Lord is my high tower, the Lord is my deliverer, the Lord is my redeemer, the Lord is my everything, the Lord our righteousness. Yes, yes, the Lord. Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, 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 Yeshua, Hamashiach. Barakatha Shalom Shalom Yeshua Elohim the consuming fire Ahaya Yeshaya the God of heaven and earth his son sits at the right hand of him the government rests on his shoulders the physician the great physician can heal all things the carpenter can fix all things all things are possible with him amen yes yes we touch and agree y'all the father of lights the father of mercies the father of the fatherless the father of widows yes he is definitely is the consuming fire y'all Yes, yes, the God of Abraham, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob rules forever. Amen. His word is forever. This world gonna pass away, but his word, his word is for, are forever. Amen. Praise the Lord for His promises, His covenants, and everything and more and above. Amen. Yes, yes. Serve an awesome Creator and Son, y'all. Awesome, awesome. Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords. Man from heaven. 
man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and Savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrificed Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace. The prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection of life, the resurrector, the revelation, the revelator, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the radiant one, the perfect example, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the rule of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the Shiloh, the son of Abraham, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine. Yes, he is the truth. Amen. He is the way. Hallelujah. He is the way, truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word of Yahuwah, the word of Elohim, the word of Yeshua HaMashiach, the word of Yahweh Shai, the word of the anointed one, the word of the branch, the word of the vine. Yes, yes, y'all. We touch and agree. Amen. We serve an awesome creator, and the Son is amazing for dying for our sins. Yes, yes, y'all boast in the Lord. Tell everybody how good he is. Tell everybody how amazing his son is. Yes, he is the seed of Abraham, promise, seed of Adam, humanity, seed of David, kingship, seed of God, deity, seed of Jacob, nat seed of Jacob, nationality, seed of Judah, tribe, seed of Shem, race, seed of woman, prophecy. Amen. We touch and agree, y'all. Yes, yes. In the authority and the power name of Jesus Christ, you are healed, renewed, restored, redeemed, forgiven, embraced, loved, forgiven, renewed mind, renewed heart, renewed soul, new mind, new heart, new soul, new hands to prosper, new temple, blessed temple, free from diseases, free from sicknesses in Jesus name. By the blood of Jesus, you're cleansed, renewed, born again, new creature in Christ. Fresh life, new beginnings, fresh starts, new seasons, new path, new seasons, new footsteps, new journeys, new paths. Amen. Double portion, triple portion, abundance all over your life. Amen. Yes, yes. Eternal life, a hundredfold. All of that. Do the Father's will, people. Do the Father's will. Amen. Father's will, Father's business forever. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So that is the word for today. The book of Luke, chapter 2. First, uh, chapter two through chapter seven, okay, with commentaries included as well. Amen. So we touch and agree. Let's always practice the things that Jesus has told us and do these things. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So I just pray to God that whoever listens this message, I just pray that you stop backsliding, you turn from your ways, and that you repent, and get baptized, start your life over, have a new life, man, new beginnings, new season, fresh start, clean slate. By his blood, Jesus' blood cleaned up our mess, our sins, our iniquities, our transgressions. The blood cleaned it up. Amen. Got to do better, people. Got to improve daily. Got to get it right with the Lord daily. The Lord gave us another day, gives us another chance to get it right with him and close to him. Amen. Keep seeking his face forevermore. Keep fearing him and keep helping people along your journey. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So what I love to do as I close you out, as I close out, I give you all this priestly blessing on the way out. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.